What's up, good people? My name is AJ. I am a CFA charter holder and an associate in an investment management firm. And today, I am going to be sharing with all of you the secret to passing the CFA exams. So of course I'm gonna get into it in a minute here, but uh, this isn't a gimmick. I don't think this is just a clickbait title. And this is definitely what I would consider to be the most important factor. Well, the biggest differentiating factor, I should say, in any one person's chance of passing the CFA exams. By the way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna base this off of my own opinion on, on my own experience in, in passing the three CFA exams, but also from conversations that I've had with other people, some, pe some of them being people who have used this, uh, this method that I'm gonna share with you here today, this secret, and, and others who haven't. And just anecdotally, it makes a big difference in uh, your chances of passing for the people who have done this versus the people who haven't. And some of you might say, well, hey, AJ, that isn't a secret. I was already planning on doing this anyway, and that's great. You should plan on doing this thing that I'm gonna share with you all here today. But it is one step in the study process that unfortunately a lot of people overlook or don't consider to be all that important, or they just don't recognize the importance of it when they hear other people talk about this. So for those people, this is kind of the differentiating factor or secret towards passing the exams, and I wanna make that point here. Before I give it to you, let me reiterate on what I said a moment ago. This isn't the most important factor in passing the exams. In my opinion, the most important factor is always going to be the amount of time that you dedicate to studying. Spending time studying and, and optimizing that time that you are studying should be priority number one when studying for the exams. So maybe consider what I'm going to share with you here today, priority number two. But it is the biggest differentiator between people who don't do it and people who do. Meaning it can, it can create the biggest difference in your own personal score on practice tests or on the real exams if you hadn't done this versus if you had. Whereas, you know, just spending an extra 20 hours studying if you already studied 300 or 400 won't make all that much of a difference unless you're doing this one thing. I was tipped off onto this practice by Mark Meldrum and he skimmed over it pretty quickly in the end of one of his videos. And so I don't want to insinuate that it, it was also a secret that he was kind of, you know, keeping close to cuff and maybe only sharing with his, uh, with his paid students, then that could be the case. But just the way I, heard Mark say that sounded to me like something he was kind of keeping under wraps. You know, he didn't emphasize the fact that you should do this, but he made it a very clear and direct point that you should be doing this. And I picked up on this maybe a month before I sat for level one. So I made sure to to utilize this, uh, this tool or this practice in the last week uh, before I took the level one exam and it helped me insurmountably relative to what I was doing on the practice test. So I think it might be also considered maybe the secret to passing by other industry experts. I don't want to put any words in their mouths. Um, again, I didn't pay for Mark Meldrum's program. He might tell everyone to do this, all of his paid students to do this beforehand. But in case you're not a paid student of Mark Meldrum and you haven't heard this advice anywhere else, if you weren't planning on doing this thing that, I get, that I'm going to tell you to do here today, you're going to be very happy that you watched this video and that you did it. So in my opinion, the big secret to being able to pass the CFA exams comes in the final review. So I've talked in other videos about how the final review is, is, is so important to your study process. And that could be anywhere between the last three days to the last three weeks before the exam. You need to dedicate one or two days to memorizing formulas. You need to memorize every single formula that you would have used for any question at any point during any of your study or practice for set exam, level one, level two, or level three. Now, especially for the level one exam, I know I'm not violating any, any ethics codes by saying that many of the questions in the exam are going to just be chug and plug type uh, uh, answers. So you're gonna get a, a question and we know the level one exam has far more questions in there so they're a lot quicker. You're just gonna get one quick question and there's gonna be a simple formula. There's gonna be maybe two or three variables in that question and it's gonna ask you for the answer. And all you have to do is recall that formula, write it down, plug in the numbers for the variables and it spits out the answer really quickly. It's super easy. A lot of those questions are if you have that formula memorized. So especially for level one, this is a major differentiator for someone who spent 300 good hours studying and didn't memorize all the formulas in the last week and someone who spent 300 good hours studying and did memorize all the formulas in the last week, there's gonna be, in my opinion, a world of difference between those two individual scores. Level two and three, slightly less important than level one, but um, definitely something that, in my opinion, you need to do. I don't think I would have passed any of the exams had I not uh, done a formula memorization in the last three days before the exam is how it worked for me. So, especially for level one and still definitely for level two and three, such an extremely important practice that if you are serious about passing these exams, 
you need, in my opinion, to bake into your final review process. So everyone's probably had some exams in high school or college where they had to memorize some formulas for. You know, the process for memorizing the formulas for the CFA exams is gonna be similar. I can, I'll share with you how it looked for me, but you know, this type of learning, which is just memorize the formula in your head and be able to regurgitate it a day later, is, uh, well, I think it works a little bit differently for everyone. So I'll tell you what I did, which is what Mark Meldrum told me to do basically four years ago. I think whatever you used in those high school or college tests that I just mentioned that worked well for you, continue to, to do it that way. Now, the difference is most likely the CFA exam is going to have a much larger volume of formulas that you have to memorize. And I, and I still have my notebooks from when I was uh, doing this process that I'll share with you here to memorize all those formulas. And I just have, you know, pages, I don't know, 20, 30 pages full of formulas when I was memorizing them in the notebook. So that's just a little bit of proof uh, to the fact that there's a huge volume of formulas that you have to memorize to be able to pass these exams. And I'll just add as one other side point, some people may have memorized them throughout their six months or four months or whatever of study. I didn't do it that way. I don't think memorizing a formula five months before you're going to have to use it in the exam was helpful. I talked about in just the last video I made, I think. Uh, for any questions that required a formula to get an answer, I would just use, I just kept a cheat sheet and I would have that formula down and then I would understand what numbers had to get plugged in where on the formula, but I wouldn't memorize it. Um, some questions I ended up practicing enough times that the formulas just became committed to memory and that's totally fine. Really, I would just kind of push those formulas off and say, okay, I'm going to deal with those later. And that's what I would do in the, in the final review shortly before the exam. So what that looked like for me was going back through all, uh, a lot of the blue boxes and EOCs, looking for any questions that required a formula to be written down and write all those formulas down. Uh, and this is about three days before the exam. I would dedicate 48 hours to this whole process. I would have maybe, you know, anywhere from, I guess I have no idea, 50 to 100 formulas written down. Uh, and then once I knew which ones I'd want to memorize, and, and actually I studied with Wiley too. Wiley gave you a formula cheat sheet. Um, for level two and level three, also what I did, I kind of forgot about this, would go back and, and double check what I had written down as important formulas and kind of audit that against the Wiley formula sheet. And uh, some things that I was missing from mine, I would add in from Wiley's, but there was a lot on Wiley's too that I felt wasn't all that important that I would just skip. And the way I knew they weren't important is I didn't use any of those formulas for any of the practice questions that I had done up to that point. Uh, based on Mark Meldrum's advice, I would write each formula down uh, 10 or 12 times that I need to memorize. I would look at it, try to learn it, write it 10 or 12 times in the notebook that I just mentioned. Uh, and then after I wrote it 12 times, I'll go to the next one, write that one 12 times. And while you're writing them, you're also trying to memorize them in your head so that you can commit these formulas to memory. And so at the end of it, I end up with 30 notebook pages full of, of written formulas because you're writing each one so many times. But really, I, would, I had about 80% of it memorized. And you know, usually I would do this on like a Thursday if the tests are on Saturday. I would start this on Thursday, do it for like 12 hours. No, Wednesday I would start it, do it for 12 hours. Thursday, then uh, I'm reviewing all those that I wrote down because it is so important to have 100% of the applicable, for, applicable formulas memorized to be able to pass the exam. So Thursday, I wasn't doing any practice problems. I was literally just memorizing, making sure that I had all those formulas memorized. Friday, I would take off the day before the exam. So that's, again, that's just the quick way on how I memorized all those formulas. Use whatever process has worked for you in the past. If you haven't had to memorize a large number of formulas in the past, maybe do what I just explained. It's what Mark Meldrum said probably works best for people. Because your committee needs to short-term memory, these aren't, you know, you're not learning these formulas, you're just kind of putting them in the brain bank and then regurgitating them in 24 or 48 or 72 hours before the exam. So, you know, they're kind of short-term memory things that you're going to remember and then throw away later. You're not really going to need for long-term, but you definitely need these to pass. So, I've told all my personal friends this who have been in the CFA program and uh, others that I've talked with who have passed the exam say, you know, memorizing formulas was, was world's more important than I would have imagined, especially for level one, I'm telling you people. Uh, if you think you're gonna go in and pass level one without memorizing all the formulas that have uh, come up in solving the practice problems, you're just wrong. You gotta have the short formulas memorized to be able to pass the exams, and it is the big secret, in my opinion, to becoming a CFA charter holder. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.